Please go crazy for the Tish Sakuja! What's up, guys? <laughs> Fuck yeah. You guys are a vibe, man. This is like spring break, <laughs> you know? I fucking love it. Danny's the bus captain, <laughs> you know? He's gonna fuck all the women, and you're all underage. Um, <laughs> Fuck yeah. My boy. Uh, thank you guys for coming out, man. I hope you guys have been having a good pandemic, you know? It's been a good two years of uh, growth, and you know, I have this pimple on my back, and for the last two years, it's just been getting bigger. You know, uh, is this COVID? <laughs> you know, <laughs> I haven't really got. I didn't really get sick. I got one of the variants during COVID. I got H and H. Did anybody get that variant? Five days straight. H and H. Yeah, heart not horny. Five days. <laughs> Five days straight, super hard, no horny, you know? <laughs> it's fucked up, I could only sleep on my back. You know? <laughs> I could pee from so far away, that was sick. <laughs> but I, I think I'd rather be hard not horny than horny not hard, right? Yeah, horny not hard doesn't sound fun, no. It sounds super bad. It sounds frustrating as shit. I'm super horny, but I can't get hard just walking around aggressively rubbing my nipples. You know? just, just trying to feel something, you know? I feel like most women are horny, not hard, right? Because if you're a woman and you're hard, you're a man, you know? I'm not being political, I'm just saying. You have a huge dick, you know? But I have, I have been having a pretty good pandemic, man. I, I got engaged over the pandemic. Thank you, thank you. Does not deserve that. Um, getting engaged is super easy. Um, women love rings, bro. <laughs> you can give them anything, but if it comes with a ring, they're like, I'll take it. <laughs> Some chlamydia? Oh, sure, <laughs> I do. <laughs> But I, a part of me, like as happy as I am that, you know, one day this pandemic will be over and I have to get married. Um, <laughs> yeah. A part of me kind of wishes I got an arranged marriage, right? Cause like my mom had an arranged marriage and I look at my mom and I'm like, yo, this lady's one of the happiest ladies I know, right? I'm just kidding, she hates her life. Um, <laughs> she hates everything about it. Um, <laughs> I'm pretty sure my mom was traded for cattle. <laughs> and not even like good one, it was just like one goat, you know? Can you imagine getting traded for a goat? The disrespect, bro. A fucking goat? I'd be pissed if I got traded for a goat. And it's like, how much goat curry can you eat before you're like, I miss Sima. <laughs> you know? You know? It's the things you don't think about when you're hungry, right? <laughs> and now you traded away the only woman. Who's gonna cook the goat, you know? <laughs> you know what happens to those guys? They end up fucking that goat, all right? <laughs> you hear it on the news, you know. You know what happens. Man sells daughter, fucks goat. <laughs> uh, but it's, it's, it's different, living, like, you know, now living with a woman makes me realize how much living alone was sick. <laughs> you know? You really start to appreciate it, right? Because you're like, I remember, man. I remember living alone. What a vibe. You could do whatever you want. Like, you could watch a whole show and understand the whole show. You know? Like, no way. Is that a plot I sense? <laughs> so nice. Because now I live with my girl, right? And like she talks, right? She loves to talk. And she'll talk through the first 20 minutes of every show. 
And then she has the audacity to ask me why that man died. <laughs> I have no idea why that man died. And I don't know why that man died for the same reason you don't know why that man died. Because you were talking, all right? Now, none of us are aware why this man is dead. <laughs> Only Netflix knows, all right? Why am I paying Netflix to not understand? You know what it is? It's 2022. It's too much content. There's too much content out there. It's everywhere, you know? The TV's giving me content. She's giving me content. <laughs> you know what the difference is though, right? The content from the TV, that's quality content. <laughs> they got writers, directors, right? Market research on their target audience, bro, you know? Money went into this, right? There's nobody funding my girlfriend's stories, bro. <laughs> she did no market research before she tell started telling me this story, right? It's like six seasons of one show, all on shuffle, right? Like, the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> but I'm learning so much about myself as a man. Right? Living with a woman, I learned how much of a man I am. Not that I just found out I'm a man, you know? I fucking, not that I just saw my dick for the first time. And I was like, what the fuck is that? I thought it was just a leaky front tail. <laughs> but it's my dick, all right? And I, I learned how much, like, I do man shit, you know? Like, when I tell you I'm going to bed, watch me sleep just now, all right? Because I'm a man and I'm sleepy, so I'm going to bed. As I tell you this, my shirt is already off. When my girl says she's going to bed, she's lying to you. She is not going to bed. She's doing everything in this house but going to bed. And when she finally goes to bed, she has to get ready for bed. The fuck are you getting ready for? This is a bed. <laughs> you ever seen a bed? <laughs> Never have to be ready for your bed. Your bed will always accept you however you come. In fact, your bed needs to be ready for you. <laughs> Get the bed ready. What the fuck are you getting ready for? Your bed is like Canada and you're an immigrant. Just come. Just come. I'm ready. Why are you getting ready? But the strangest part is it takes her 16 minutes in the bathroom to get ready for bed. 16 minutes. The strangest part of it, when she comes out, it doesn't even smell like poo. <laughs> it's just a hint of cucumber in the air. <laughs> like, what are you making a salad in here? <laughs> you work at Subway? <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> you know? Because <laughs> I promise you, if I spend 16 minutes in a bathroom, when I come out, you will smell the shit. All right? <laughs> and she comes out, and you see her, and you're like, you gotta look in her eyes like you love her, you know? But really you're looking at like, Whoa, something's different, you know? <laughs> you're not the same woman that walked into that washroom 16 minutes ago. And you gotta stare into her eyes while you try to figure it out. And you're like, why are your eyebrows not as thick as they were 16 minutes ago? <laughs> the fuck did you do with that cucumber? <laughs> <laughs> But same way, you ever go to bed with a girl that just goes to bed? And you look at her like, ugh, are you not gonna get ready for bed? <laughs> <laughs> just because I don't know what you're doing in there doesn't mean I don't want you to do it, <laughs> <All right? laughs> Do it, but like, what are you doing, <laughs> you know? <laughs> it's cool though, me and my girl over the pandemic, we got a, we got a little puppy, all right? We got a little Pomsky. It's a Pomeranian Husky. It looks like a Husky, size of a palm. Like, it's a flex. It's nine pound, it's a nine pound hus uh, Husky, all right? It's fucking adorable. People see this dog all the time and they're like, yo, no way, that's a dog. Like, that's fucking cute as shit, right? Like, if you think your dog is cute, I promise you, my dog will fuck your dog up in cuteness, all right? If your dog attacked my dog, you would wish that your dog died, all right? That's how cute my puppy is, all right? And I flex with it on Instagram all the time and people are like, yo, no way. And I'm like, no big deal, that's my dog, <laughs> right? But like a month ago, this dog like ate a shitload of weed, right? 
and it's nine pounds, it should eat no weed, <laughs> you know? Because <laughs> some dogs are huge. You're like, here's a little bit of weed. Shut the fuck up, you'll be fine, all right? But nine pounds should eat no weed. It was pissing itself, it was shitting itself, couldn't walk straight. It's like, I thought it was gonna die. My biggest concern though, I told way too many people I have a dog, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Because I can't, <laughs> I can't just not show up with a dog anymore. <laughs> Maybe for a week, eventually someone's gonna be like, yo bro, where's your dog? <laughs> and I gotta be like, yo, you're right there, silly. You know where you are. <laughs> <laughs> Don't ask dumb questions, bro. Because <laughs> here's the thing, yo. Dogs will die, all right? They're fucked up. They will eat anything. You could wake up in the morning and shit on the floor and your dog will look at you like, may I? <laughs> They're disgusting. They have no sense, all right? My, my recommendation, if you have a dog for one whole year, don't tell anybody you have a dog, all right? Because that way if the dog does die, it's between you and God, all right? Yeah, you could still go out that night, right? <laughs> Yeah, you'll be a little sad, right? But no one will know why. <laughs> hey, bro, what's wrong? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> but they don't know one hour ago I had to toss my dog in the condo garbage hole. <laughs> you, <know? laughs> you guys like the condo garbage hole? <laughs> By far, probably the greatest hole that ever existed. You could put anything in that hole. Where does it go? Literally, not my problem. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like the hole's problem to me. <laughs> you can put everything but your problems down that hole. Unless your problem is petite, then she'll fit right in. <laughs> I love that hole though. I feel sorry for people that have houses. You ever met someone that has a house, has to carry their garbage to the curb? Like, bro, get yourself a hole, my friend. The garbage hole is where it's at, man. I love it. It's my favorite hole in the world. If God came down right now, okay? And God put a gun to my head. I don't know why God has a gun, but it's for aesthetics, all right? And it's God's gun. This is a gun you've never seen before. It's something fantastic. You can't even concentrate. It's out of your head and you're like, God damn, God. He has to smoke you with it. Focus, 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 all right? And he's like, listen, I'll give you any hole you want. But the hole you choose is the only hole you get for the rest of your life. So choose wisely, without hesitation. Condo garbage hole. Are you crazy? I got CGH tatted on my chest, all right? The condo garbage hole is by far my most favorite hole. Has anybody in here ever fucked the condo garbage hole? It's always wet, all right? <laughs> I'm pretty sure I don't recycle um, because I have a condo garbage hole, <laughs> all right? I put everything in one bag and I toss it in the hole. Sometimes I don't even tie the bag up. You just throw it in there loose. <laughs> Let it jingle and jangle all around. It's how you keep it wet, <laughs> all right? For later. <laughs> But I, I, I've been really trying to be like a better person, you know, over this pandemic. I fucking, I've lost 80 pounds over the last two years, right? Thank you, thank you, thank you. People ask me all the time. They're like, yo, what's the secret, bro? And I'm like, there's no secret. You just gotta work hard, not eat everything you wanna eat, and have patience. It takes time. And people are like, oh, sick, nice. Thanks for the advice. But uh, what's the secret, bro, <laughs> you know? Like I'm holding out on them. Um, and I am, uh, there is a secret. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's a very expensive secret. No, the weed's gonna get you fat. Um, what you gotta do is you gotta spend all your money on cocaine, all right? Yeah. You do fat lines, all right? You suppress your appetite. And then when you get the Coke munchies, you know the Coke munchies when you can eat one chip really fast? <laughs> you know? Replace that chip with mushrooms, all right? Yeah, now the potion is complete, all right? You're gonna be all sorts of fucked up, all right? And then you're gonna ask yourself, why am I this way? 
and then you'll sober up and you'll do one of two things. You will either lose the weight or you will kill yourself, all right? But either way, there will be less of you, okay? <laughs> and this is not a pyramid scheme, all right? This is legit. I don't profit off this. But side note, I do sell cocaine and I do sell mushrooms. Let's get you on a meal plan, all right? We'll, <laughs> we'll figure it out. We'll do this together. <laughs> we'll be good. But for real, I'm, try I'm trying to be a better person in all aspects of my life. Like, I, I know I throw everything down the condo garbage hole, but... <laughs> but I want the environment to be sick, you know? Like, I want the environment to look like it wears a bandana, you know? You're like, God damn, environment. <laughs> You're sick, you know? But no, I, I, I'm trying. Like, uh, but I also do piece of shit things at the same time. Like, I'll hotbox my car for 45 minutes with the AC on, right? <laughs> right? But then you look up and there's a sign that says, no idling. And I just look at that sign and I go, I am no idol, I am a mere man, <laughs> you know? And I just keep smoking. I'm just... <laughs> Just piece of shit. <laughs> Just piece of shit behavior. But I'm, I'm, try, I'm trying to be better. I'm trying to be better. I, I stopped watching porn. I haven't watched porn in two years. All right? Yeah, I know. Thank you. I'm a god. Um, <laughs> it's, it was tough. The only reason I stopped, because I was, I was, once I was watching porn, and um, I saw this meme, and it said, only weak men watch porn. And I slammed the computer down. <laughs> forgetting how hard I was and just crushed my penis. And for the last two years, I've been unable to get hard. Um, <laughs> so I stopped the porn. Um, but for real, I, I, I don't know how women watch porn, you know? You guys, I don't know how you do it, but this is how men watch porn, all right? We're at home with somebody, okay? And then that person leaves, all right? <laughs> and now you are alone. And something about being alone makes you super horny, all right? And the more alone you are, the hornier you are, all right? And now this person leaves and you start doing math in your head, right? You're like, yo, how, far, how, how long is this person gone for? Because then the longer they're gone, the bigger the device, you know what I mean? Because if they're gone for 10 minutes, you're just like, yo, it's a quick thing on my phone, you know? But if they're gone for the day, you're like, I'm putting this HDMI cable. <laughs> into my computer, all right? And it's gonna be surround sound fucking, all right? Because <laughs> I got all day, baby, right? <laughs> but now I don't, I, don't watch, I don't watch porn, so I don't choose horny time, you know? Horny time chooses me, all right? It's like I'm a wizard and the horny is the wand, all right? It picks you, all right? And it'll happen in the strangest places grocery store, you know? You're just walking around and you see a hundred cantaloupes stacked on top of each other and your dick just twitches, you know? Because they all look like a bunch of giant veiny tits all stacked on top of each other and all you can think is stupid sexy fruit, you know? <laughs> and like I don't, you gotta have some respect for yourself when you jerk off, you know? You can't just jerk off, laying on your bed into your belly button. <laughs> it's wrong. Have some respect for yourself, all right? I want you to imagine every time that Miss Frizzle is teaching a class in your balls, all right? The magic school bus is in your balls, all right? And she's trying to teach the class how babies are made, all right? But that's the day you decide to jerk off into your belly button. And then they just land and they're like, this is not what was supposed to happen, <laughs> you know? Giant towel comes, squish, whole class is dead, all right? If you're gonna jerk off, do it into a toilet and press flush, all right? Because at least give your sperm a chance, you know? Because then they think they're doing what God intended them to do, you know? They're just flying through the pipes trying to fucking find the end goal. But they hit shit at the end, right? Which is not too different from real life. For my anal lovers. Some people love it. They come in the bum. And what's waiting for the cum? Little bit of poo, all right? It's called cum poo. 
It's very real. It's like a chocolate ice cream cone dipped into vanilla, you know? <laughs> it's item number 314 at most Asian restaurants. Um, <laughs> it's very real and it's very dangerous, all right? Like if you, I could throw something at you right now and you had to catch one of them, all right? COVID or Kumpu, which one would you catch right now? You take Kumpu? You take Kumpu over COVID? <laughs> this guy likes kumpu. I can't get over that. <laughs> no one has ever said kumpu. Um, <laughs> there's no vaccine for that, bro. <laughs> I'll take COVID every time, bro. <laughs> <laughs> what am I just gonna be hard for five days? No problem. <laughs> I'm fucking. <laughs> I'll do it. I learned. I learned a lot over this pandemic. Like I learned. I learned. I do no research, right? Me and my boy were chilling. We were drinking Snapple. We were on the beach, and he goes, "Yo, Snapple's great, but just like you know, DMX says, it's unfortunate that the KKK owns Snapple." And I was like, "Yo, no way, for real." And I've just been telling everybody, you know? I didn't Google it, I don't know, you know? But I tell everyone that the KKK owns Snapple. And I tell them it as I drink it, you know? Because what, am I gonna stop drinking Snapple because the KKK owns Snapple? This is a delicious product, all right? It's like I still eat a Chick-fil-A, they hate gay people, you know? What, am I not gonna eat their chicken, <laughs> you know? I put sauerkraut on my sausages. We know what the Germans did, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Flavor wins, baby. <laughs> every time, every time, flavor wins. <laughs> I don't know if you guys know this, um, but I'm a certified shaman. Yeah, 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 I got my license and everything. Um, yeah, this one time I ate 12 grams of mushrooms and <laughs> Then this thing came from the sky and was like, yo, you're a shaman now. <laughs> I was like, no way, you know? <laughs> so now I just drug people, you know? <laughs> For our Lord and Savior, Elon Musk, you know? <laughs> but I don't do, I don't like, it's not like a bad drug. I don't fuck them after, you know? It's very consensual drugging, you know? It's my friends asking me to do drugs. Right? And they need a shaman. And they're like, bro, let's all do mushrooms. And I come over and I give everybody five grams of mushrooms. I take five grams of mushrooms. And then an hour later, I'm like, boys, let's throw this ball. <laughs> all right? But they're all just crying, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and I'm like, can't you guys figure out your past traumas on your own time? <laughs> all right? <laughs> I want to play with this ball. <laughs> <laughs> you know what the problem is? It's peer pressure, right? If you're from Ontario, you know, we have, we have the D.A.R.E. program, right? With the lion in school, drugs are retarded, everyone, or whatever. <laughs> whatever it stands for. And they tell you, they're like, don't do drugs, don't fall for peer pressure, right? Just a recipe to never have friends, okay? <laughs> peer pressure is one of the most beautiful things in the world. It literally means you have peers, all right? <laughs> How blessed are you <laughs> that you have friends? <laughs> friends that want to do something with you so badly that they're gonna pressure you into doing it with them. <laughs> Honestly, sounds kind of nice that you have that in your life. <laughs> you know how many people are sitting at home right now with absolutely nothing to do? Nobody's asking them to do anything. They don't have peer pressure. You know what they have? Just straight up regular pressure, all right? <laughs> yeah, their check engine light has been on for two weeks, all right? <laughs> And they don't know what to do, you know? Just loser shit, all right? So next time your friends are like, bro, come on, do the drug. Or, you know, come out. Don't say no, all right? Just say yes, all right? What's the opposite of peer pressure? Enemy pressure, is that what you want? Five guys holding you down, cutting your eyelids, asking you for the information, you know? All you can think is, I wish I had peers. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna start a program. It's like Alcoholics Anonymous, but it's for peer pressure. It's for people that want to get fucked up, but don't know how to go about it, <laughs> you know? 
<laughs> Come to my basement, all right? <laughs> Have a seat in any of the bean, cha bean bag chairs. <laughs> and as soon as you sit down, the pressure is on, my friend, all right? <laughs> But where's it coming from? It's anonymous. You have no idea. You have no idea. Just email transfer me 50 bucks. And, <laughs> and we're even, and don't tell anyone you were here, all right? Um. <laughs> I fucking love, I love doing mushrooms though, you know? It's, it's my, favorite, my favorite drug to do. But the problem is like, when you do mushrooms, sometimes you can't talk to certain people, you know? Certain people are off limits because their mind is too weird, all right? <laughs> like I was hanging out with my buddy, we were sitting around a fire, we were doing mushrooms, and this guy, he's a conspiracy theorist, hardcore. Like if you think your boy's a conspiracy theorist, my boy will fuck your boy up, all right? <laughs> my boy loves conspiracies, all right? And we're sitting around the fire, and I made the mistake of telling him my thoughts, all right? And I was like, yo, you know what I really feel like doing right now? And he's like, what? And I'm like, digging, you know? I just want to get a shovel, I want to dig a hole, you know? I just feel like digging. And I was like, when was the last time you heard about digging? And this guy goes, you know what? Not since the movie Holes, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Not since Shia LaBeouf was digging. Has anyone talked about digging, right? And I'm like, yo, what's the furthest any human has ever dug before? And without missing a beat, he goes 12 kilometers. <laughs> and I'm like, how do you know that, right? And I'm like, why don't we dig further? And he goes, now you're asking the right questions. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, I'm not even entirely sure what I'm asking, all right? I just know that I want to dig a hole, all right? Dig a hole, go to China, get a bubble tea or something, you know? I just want to dig, all right? And like, I'm not a flat earther, all right? I'm a round earther. I believe the earth is round. I look at the earth and I go, damn, look how round it is, <laughs> you know? That's me, but I want to dig. And I know I understand, like, I can't dig too far because the core of the earth is too hot. I'll never get there. But for a moment, suspend your disbelief, all right? Let's just say it's topsoil all the way through, all right? Okay? <laughs> a little bottom soil in the middle, you know, whatever. But it's soil, all right? And you can dig, all right? So I dig. I dig to China. I'm digging, all right? And I get to China. I come out of the ground like that. Do you understand what just happened? I was digging like this. At some point, I'm digging like this, all right? What am I standing on? Where am I digging, all right? Because <laughs> there's a flippening that occurs, all right? But here's the thing, the government, all right? They don't want you to flip, all right? Because they, they flipped before. The government, they originally, they dug a hole, some white people went in and some Filipinos came out, all right? <laughs> Those were the original flips, all right? <laughs> you guys are fucked. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm, happy, I'm happy to be home. I'm like, I, I was in Australia for like five weeks, and like, my tolerance for weed has gone down completely, all right? <laughs> And I'm like a certified stoner. I took the exam and everything, all right? Yeah, it's a sick exam. You smoke a blunt and then drive a car. Uh, yeah. Really good at it, all right? Like, I could smoke weed all day and then go apply for a mortgage. You know what I mean? That's the kind of stoner I am, all right? Before, before I left to Australia, I was smoking almost an ounce a day, entirely too much weed, all right? Like a fat one in the morning and every hour after that until I... <laughs> until I feel nothing, you know? But then I went to Australia and like, I tried to smoke weed there, but their weed was garbage. Because I'm from Canada, I'm a connoisseur. Do you understand what I'm saying? And their weed was trash and I was like, I don't, I don't want to pay this money for this garbage weed. And I was like, you know what, I'll take a little tolerance break. And now, I'm too high, bro, <laughs> you know? You take one hit and you're like, why do I have to pee? And I'm thirsty, you know? <laughs> This is entirely too much feeling, all right? Wow, this is supposed to be the most sophisticated machine in the world, all right? Figure it out, body, all right? Transfer some fluids, you know? Loosen the pressure on the bladder, moisten the tongue, you know? I'm waiting for the future. I hope that's what Elon's chip does, all right? 
just upgrades the plumbing. I'm waiting for the day we can shit from our mouths, you know? <laughs> You've never been to a disgusting washroom and you're like, I got a shit, but there's no way I'm sitting on that toilet. <laughs> Flip a switch, shit from your mouth, all right? <laughs> it's the future, all right? It's the future. Instead of soap, there's just Listerine, <laughs> you know? <laughs> <laughs> I just I'm getting too high man in Australia the first like I tried to find weed when I was there right and I smoked it and it wasn't good and then I stopped and the first seven days of not smoking weed really fucked me up started dreaming again right but not even like dreams just goals aspirations you know what I mean like just just things I want to do you know I was like, what is this feeling, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Ambition, <laughs> you know? I hate it, <laughs> all right? I just wanna feel nothing and watch the same episode of South Park over and over again. <laughs> I don't like this. <laughs> but it, 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 it was weird, I'm getting, I'm, I'm getting more used to it now, but like, I remember, like when I got there, I was looking for weed, right? And like, I was in Melbourne and they have scooters everywhere, just like LA, and I was scooting around looking for weed, and I got caught by the cops, um, but not because I was looking for weed, but because I wasn't wearing a helmet, right? And the way this cop stopped me, he just rolled down his window and went, oi, shithead, put on your fucking helmet. And I know how they talk to each other. I was there for 24 hours. So I was like, I'm sorry, cunt, all right? <laughs> and he legit went, it's all right, mate, <laughs> you know? <laughs> I'm like, what kind of place is this, all right? Australia's fucked. It's like they were criminals at one point. Right? And you, they have the vibe, you know? They all look like they, like they just came out of prison, you know? But for a bunch of prisoners, they got a full economy, they got fucking condos. <laughs> like, good for you guys, you know? <laughs> but what a fucked place, I'm so happy. So happy to be home, I fucking, I, I, I had a good time, but like, the people suck, all right? Because like we're, we're from Canada and we see Australians here every once in a while, right? And we're like, yo, sick accent, dude, right? And then he fucks all your friends and you're like, who the fuck is this guy, all right? <laughs> <laughs> this sexy accent. <laughs> but then you go there and then you're surrounded by that accent and you're like, you guys are fucked, all right? You sound horrible, all you hear is, oi, oi, can't, can't, oi, oi, can't, can't, oi, oi, can't, oh no, you know? <laughs> <laughs> you guys are fucked. And that was the first time in my life that I was a brown guy with an accent, <laughs> you know? <laughs> like, like my people, <laughs> you know? <laughs> I felt good. And everything I learned about Australia, I learned from The Simpsons, all right? Yeah. So that was my preparation. That was my preparation going to Australia. I watched the same episode three times, and I was like, knifey spoony, all right? The water goes in the opposite direction, right? And you can't really bring anything into the country. So I got on this flight, 17 hours, and as soon as I landed, I got taken into secondary questioning. Got my bags, and I was like, well, what, why is this happening? I'm Canadian, I have a Canadian passport, we both suck the queen's dick, what's the problem here, you know? <laughs> but then I saw a giant mirror, and I saw my reflection, and I was like, oh yeah. <laughs> 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 That's why. <laughs> it was a long flight, I forgot what I looked like, <laughs> you know? And they started going through all my shit, every little thing. But to be honest, not once did they ask me about drugs. The first thing they asked me, do you have any fruits and vegetables? <laughs> and I was like, what? What kind of a loser, all right, <laughs> is sneaking an orange into Australia, all right? In their check bag, mind you, right? He's like, I'm gonna eat this tomorrow. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the fuck? <laughs> what kind of shit is that? Not once, not once did they ask me about drugs at all, not once, which is a good thing that I had an ass full of drugs, <laughs> all right? But it got me thinking, and I was like, what I should have done was I should have hooped the carrot, you know? <laughs> like, do you have any fruits and vegetables? No. <laughs> Leave, take a shit, ruin their ecosystem, <laughs> you know? But then I started getting worried. I was like, what if they bring out a little rabbit, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Find the carrot, <laughs> you know? This little white bunny sniffs my ass, comes out, little brown bunny, you know? It was a long flight. I'm so sorry. But it was cool, it was cool there. You know what was cool about that place? Um, every weekend, 
they had a, a freedom, uh, freedom protest, which was cool because it reminded me of home, right? <laughs> And like, I've never really protested anything before. The only protest I was ever a part of, I was just downtown when it was happening. I don't know if you remember uh, Uber versus Taxi. You guys remember that? <laughs> I had no idea what was going on. It was so confusing. It was just old Indian guys versus young Indian guys, right? <laughs> <laughs> like, can't you guys do this at home? <laughs> so many people need rides right now. As an Indian man myself, this is bad business, all right? <laughs> but then the Freedom Convoy happened, and that was legit the first protest. Me and a bunch of comics, we ate some mushrooms and we went out there ourselves, right? And I was surprised at what I saw. I saw other Indian people, and I was like, no way, freedom, <laughs> right? And they're like, yo, freedom. <laughs> and I was like, no way, freedom, bro, that's it. And then I started telling people I was there, and then people started calling me a Nazi, which is crazy, because I'm an Indian guy, you know? I've never met an Indian Nazi in my life. I've watched a lot of World War I and II documentaries, never seen an Indian guy. But a lot of them were in black and white and we're like right in the middle, so like maybe we were there, I don't know. I couldn't tell, you know? But it's such a crazy time because it's 2022 and people are like, yo, it's 2022, be proud of who you are. And other people are like, yo, bro, you're a Nazi. And you're like, what? <laughs> Is it time for the brown Nazi, right? Yeah. Doesn't that sound like a TV show that can come on after The Good Doctor? <laughs> <You know? laughs> Coming up next, the brown Nazi. <laughs> Will Natish pay his taxes? <laughs> <You know? laughs> People think I'm gonna hail, but then I just start dancing. <laughs> you know? <laughs> it's such a funny time we're living in. Like, white people are getting in a lot of trouble for like cultural appropriation, right? But who's getting them in trouble? Other white people, all right? <laughs> who's not mad? The culture they're appropriating, all right? More than likely, they're like, yo, sick. <laughs> like if I saw an Indian guy or a white guy dressed up in Indian shit right now, I wouldn't be mad. I'd be like, this guy wants to fuck a Priya and I hope he does, all right? <laughs> <laughs> fuck yeah. Go get it, <laughs> all right? Like white people, you have, you have culture. Yours is just called cancel, <laughs> you know? <laughs> <laughs> like my, my brother's wedding when my brother's wedding happened it was an Indian wedding but the reception was very western everybody wore suits and ties and the women wore dresses but my boy showed up the one white guy and he showed up full head to toe Indian clothes alright he even got somebody to tie a turban for him who did it? I have no idea alright but do you think anybody got mad when he showed up? not at all he was like the fucking mascot of the night alright <laughs> Everybody wanted pictures with him, you know? There's a whole vibe, so. <laughs> so just relax. Because <laughs> we're actually living in like, such a good time right now, you know? Like, walk through a park in Toronto in the summertime and tell me it's not Noah's Ark of Ethnicities that crashed there, all right? You got two of every kind, all right? And they're all just fucking chilling, you know? They're having a good time, four Indian guys behind a tree, you know, taking pictures, right? <laughs> <laughs> There's an Asian family looking for the golden can or whatever they're looking for, you know? <laughs> There's a bunch of white guys balancing on a rope, you know? <laughs> what are they doing? I have no idea. <laughs> but they're having a good time, you know? You know what's funny? White culture always involves ropes, <laughs> you know? <laughs> you guys fucking love ropes, bro. <laughs> you know? You do so much with this. <laughs> we can skip, we can kill, we can tug of war, we can kill, <laughs> you know? Like, okay. <laughs> you guys love ropes, bro. <laughs> but it's a funny time. It's funny, because like, okay, so during, so during the lockdowns, right? When the lockdowns first started, like, yo, I tried the lockdowns. Not for me, you know what I mean? <laughs> Maybe it's for you, but it wasn't for me, you know? I was hanging out with the homies being a super spreader, you know? <laughs> just walking around coughing at old ladies, right? Just, mm. just trying to find the weak ones, you know? <laughs> but one night, me and my boys were walking around the city. It was like 2 o'clock in the morning, and I got a text message, very high on mushrooms, all right? And I got a message saying, bring home cat food. Now, I have a cat, so it wasn't like 
what? <laughs> you know? I was like, all right, I got a mission on mushrooms. I love a good mission on mushrooms, right? So I went to the Raba. Or is it the Raba? <laughs> you know? <laughs> I have no idea. I just know that place has existed before I have, all right? But not once have I heard anyone associated with that company ever say the name of that company, all right? I have never heard a commercial, welcome to the Raba. <laughs> Come on down to the Raba. Never, you know? I've never heard an employee there say the name of the company, you know? I just, just like to know what it's called, all right? Anyways, I'm in the Raba. I'm in the Raba, all right? I'm very high on mushrooms, and I'm looking for cat food. And I'm looking in this one section for 20 minutes before I realize I'm just standing in the Asian food section, all right? And I check myself right away. I'm very high on mushrooms. I see myself in the little mirror, and I'm like, do better, bro, <laughs> you know? And I go around the corner and I find cat food in the right section. And then I go in line, five person line, I'm waiting in line, finally get to the front. This 90 year old white guy buds in front of me, all right? And I'm very high on mushrooms. I have nothing but love in my heart at this moment, okay? So I take a step forward, he takes a step forward. I look at him, I'm like, this guy's an old guy. I'm like, sir, you go ahead. And he looks at me and he was taken aback because I was being so nice to him. And I look how I look, right? And he didn't know how to handle it. And he's like, oh, no, you go ahead. <laughs> and I was like, no, sir, you go ahead. He's like, no, you. And I was like, no, sir, please, you. And he's like, no, you. I'm like, guy, you go, all right? <laughs> you don't understand how high I am, all right? You started a process, you need to finish it, all right? <laughs> or tonight I will not sleep, all right? So please, sir, go ahead. And he wouldn't go, and he made me go. And as I went ahead, he looked at me and said, you, you're one of the good kinds of your people, <laughs> you know? Aww. And I was like, do I fight him, you know? <laughs> He's 90, easy win, you know? If I hit him and he dies, they'll still blame COVID, you know? Easy W, right? But the mushrooms checked me. They checked me and they were like, yo, relax, bro. Not but five minutes ago, did you think Asian food was cat food, all right? <laughs> On the wheel of racism, you both hit it tonight, all right? I was like, hey, yeah, I guess you're right. Uh, so I took my weird W and I left, all right? And I thought about it. I was like, yo, I know a lot of my people. I am one of the good kinds of my people, you know? But fuck those guys, you know? <laughs> I don't know, I'm just trying to say, be nice to each other. You know what I'm saying? It's, we live in, we live in such a fucked up time and everyone's so mean to each other, you know? Just fucking be nice, call an Asian an Asian, call a brown guy a brown guy, you know? And, Fucking ignore white people, you know? Uh, just do your part, you know? Um, <laughs> I'll tell you this before we wrap it up. Um, it's been a good, honestly, I know it's been a pandemic and it's been fucked up for the last two years, but like, I've, life's been pretty good, you know? Like, my sister got married over the pandemic, which was pretty cool, because like, she married a very nerdy guy, you know? And as a brother, that's what you want for your sister. You want her to be with a nerdy guy, you know? <laughs> You don't want your sister to be with a cool guy, you know? I don't know why I'm thinking about my sister being with any guy, all right? But if God came down with this sexy gun, all right? And he was like... <laughs> and he was like, buddy, who's gonna fuck your sister, all right? Nerdy guy, cool guy, uh, nerdy guy, every time, all right? And I say he's a nerd, because I've been to a lot of bachelor parties in my life. I'll never tell you about them, all right? Because I took an oath to the boys. We don't talk about that, all right? <laughs> But this guy's bachelor party, I'll tell you all about it, all right? <laughs> we went paintballing, and then we had dinner, and that's it, all right? <laughs> this is a very nice guy. He's such a nice guy, if I had another sister, he could fuck her too, you understand? <laughs> <laughs> He's such a nice guy, all right? He's such a nice guy that if you met this guy, you'd be like, bro, you gotta fuck my sister. <laughs> And then I would come fight you and be like, no, he's fucking my sister, you know? That's how good of a guy this guy is, all right? <laughs> so this is what I do. I do stand-up comedy. I wake up in the morning, I sit down, I wait for nighttime, all right? <laughs> and when it's dark enough, I'll go outside, all right? So I have lots of free time. So like I said, I often eat mushrooms, all right? I went to this guy's bachelor party for lying on mushrooms, all right? You ever been paintballing on mushrooms? It's like you're going to war, all right? 
everyone's excited, but a little bit scared, <laughs> you know? <laughs> you walk in with eight guys, they give you a full suit, they give you a gun, there's a breeze, right? And you're like, I'm indoors, where is this breeze coming from? <laughs> It's my main concern, all right? <laughs> and here's the thing about war. It's very easy to commit an atrocity, all right? PTSD is real, all right? Because you are no longer a person, all right? You are just a tool. And war was about to begin. But before it started, a family walked in and joined us. It was a mother, a father, and their 10-year-old son. And they got split up. They put the mother and son on one team and the father on our team. And war had begun, all right? <laughs> I felt like I was being controlled by God himself, all right? <laughs> Flying on mushrooms, and he gave me one mission. Protect the condo garbage hole, all right? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm on one, all right? I turn the corner, and the first thing I see is this stupid ass little 10-year-old kid, all right? He's scared, he's confused. This guy's terrified, all right? Because for sure, he was like, yo, mom, I wanna go paintballing. Take me paintballing, I really wanna go paintballing. I've been watching paintballing on YouTube. Look how fast I can shoot my fingers. I wanna be a loser, mom. Take me paintball. And his mom said, okay, my loser son, come. I will bring you paintball. And this kid realized in that moment that this is a man's game, all right? He heard grown men screaming for their lives all around him. He wasn't holding his gun right, you know? He was scared, you could see in his face. He's scared, he's confused, he didn't know what to do. So bang, headshot, smoke this kid in the face falls to his knees and he starts screaming because the paintball to the face fucking hurts, all right? His mom, in horror, comes running up to him. Bang, headshot. <laughs> right in the back of the head. <laughs> Hair goes flying. She falls on her son, all right? And they're both screaming, all right? And the rules of paintball are, you shoot once and you stop. But the rules of war. <laughs> Very different, all right? I probably put like 62 shots into these guys. After a while, they stopped screaming. They were just taking it, right? Uh, 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 uh. I felt like a million bucks, but like dirty money, you know? <laughs> I turn around and all I see is that same stupid face, but grown, right? The father, he's looking at me and he's conflicted, just as conflicted as the son, but his confliction was different because I could see he's like, Big part of him was like, bro, that's my fucking family, right? But a little piece of him was like, yo, as your teammate, solid kills, right? <laughs> <laughs> Two headshots, who are you, <laughs> you know? But I could see in his face, he was conflicted. He didn't know what to do, how to feel about it. So bang, headshot, I smoked this guy too, all right? I was like, I know you're on my team, bro, but I killed your family, I can never trust you again. <laughs> So please, start from the beginning, all right? And that was the moment it all made sense. Because look, they've been saying it our whole lives. But in that moment, it finally made sense. Titanic finally made sense. Women and children first, you know? Because if you get rid of them, it's just you and the boys, you know? <laughs> you guys have been an amazing audience. Thank you so much. My name is Natish. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. One, two, three, Macaw!